Good morning, everybody. Jeff Toyson from Cutter Masters. Anyway, let's true up the wheel. <clears throat> to true up the wheel, you want a little bit of scuffing going on. You don't necessarily want the stone on center. You want to lock the rotate of the air spindle so the spindle doesn't move during the grinding process. You always want to start out slow because the two wheels have to learn to respect one another. These aren't necessarily round when they're brand new, but they'll be round after you use them a little bit. So all we're going to do is we're going to bring the two wheels in contact. Then we're going to feed very slowly, and we're just going to go back and forth till we get the shape that we want in this wheel, which is a little bit of a inside of the cone shape. On the Cutter Master Professional, there's a lead screw backlash compensator. So, when you're using your elevator, if you find there's any drift in this dial, you can just tighten this backlash compensator right there, and that takes the slop out of your lead screw so that when you <coughs> raise and lower the dial, there's no dial, dial drift when you go up or down. In our truing video, you saw that we ground a little bit of shape into the wheel like that. We want this corner to be proud so we know exactly what part of the wheel comes in contact with the tool. So we'll be, we'll be rotated clockwise about a degree or so to complement that, that grind we put on there. To determine the motor tilt, what we've done is we've taken the... You kind of want a nice blend on the end and you want a little bit steeper primary on the side so it's a three, this is a three-quarter inch MS, so the primary is 9 degrees and the secondary on the side is 18 degrees. The end of the tool in this case is probably just below 20 degrees. So we took the primary and the secondary and divided it by two. And in this case, it would be about 13 or 14 degrees. And that's, we have the motor set at that height. So before you do anything, make sure all of your settings are snug. So using your centering pin, this is for centering your X and Y axis, what you want is you want your wheel to be about the center of the wheel. And you want to bring this in in the Y axis just till it touches. And then make sure your indicator is set to zero. Now that you've done that, we'll back up the X, we'll bring the wheel in a little bit, and now we're going to bring this over till it touches, and then we will set the X axis indicator to zero also. And now we'll move this back. <clears throat> Always when you move your increments when you're getting set up, Move, move by 100 thou increments. For example, I want to remove this centering pin at the moment, so I'll just back this up a couple hundred. Take the pin out. Then I'm going to move it back so I know where I am. So, <clears throat> so you're always in a position where you know where you are. You can now we're going to load the tool. You begin by moving your upper y-axis away
you know you're going to need to be about center. You want to always make sure you're clamping on good shanks so that you you get a nice symmetrical bite on the tool. Set your indexing collar to your chosen number of flutes, in this case two flute or four flute. on the corner goes your motors in position so now we're going to decide what size of radius in this case we're going to pretend it's 150 thou so we're going to move this away so we move the y-axis back 150 now the y-axis the tool will pivot around a 150 degree arc on this corner So now the operation, because we're doing a bull nose, is to bring the tool to the wheel. Because the wheel would determine the radius, the wheel location will determine the radius that's ground on the tool. And you're just going to bring it in almost to touch. In this case, there's already a radius on there, so it's a little hard to pick up the corner. It's much easier if you're starting from square. So just bring it in. You don't want to overcut the sides. Now that we've, we've located the y-axis, now we're going to back this away. And you should be able to rotate the tool. <clears throat> At the end of the day, this should be 150 thousandths. And when you're around this side, once you're into full length, that should be 150 thousandths. Because you, it, when you swing, it picks up that other feed. So, now we're going to bring the tool in. Until it's close. And we're going to rotate it. Now you can see the wheel is farther up the, uh, the end mill. The only thing you do, the only feed, once you've located this dimension, the y-axis here, you're fixed. The only thing you do to create the grind is you feed with the x-axis feed on the radius air spindle. And now you can swing your radius. So now we're going to put a secondary grind on this 3 quarter inch end mill. The easiest way we found to do that is just to leave all your settings, loosen up the tool, rotate it down a little bit, maybe 15 degrees, tighten the collet back up, and then you're going to leave the same radius on there, but you're going to move the upper spindle in. The upper white carriage in, just move it in until it comes in contact with the wheel. Remember, it's just a grind. You've tipped it so you're not damaging the primary on the side. Secondary grinds are just clearance, so as long as the edge is strong enough and the tool is relatively balanced, the exact position doesn't matter that much. But we find this is a pretty good result. You don't have to mess with your settings too much. So we've repositioned that. Wheel is clear. Now, <clears throat> my indicators are still in the same. I'm going to move this back 100 thou just so I can rotate it and check it. So there's your secondary right there. This is just clearance back here, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter too much. You can always take more off if you're going to go real fast in a soft material. Once you're happy with that, I'll move the table back in my 100 thou by keeping an eye on my 
x-axis indicator. All there is to it. Got lots of clearance here, didn't damage the primary on that side, stayed away from the primary on the end. Very straightforward.